A little while ago, Cloner Alliance reached out to me about reviewing their high-end USB capture card, the Flint 4KP Plus. So upon confirmation of no guideline script or anything like that, I accepted. The Flint 4KP Plus is Cloner Alliance's high-end external capture card option. We're gonna see that as far as USB capture cards go, it's got versatility and it's pretty ideal for 1080p capture. My usual card of choice is the Elgato HD60 Pro, a mid-range by today's standards internal capture card. I've got quite the love-hate relationship with this thing, so that's why my interest was peaked to check out a competitor. This will essentially be a buyer's guide to capture cards starring the 4KP Plus, as well as the HD60 Pro and and this cheap $20 generic capture card off Amazon as frames of references. We'll see how the Flint 4KP Plus compares to the other options on the market. Whether you're just getting started with streaming or recording gameplay, this will be a video to help you understand what you're about to drop 100 to 200 bucks on. Your capture card is responsible for processing an input signal into a convenient format on your PC. To put your capture card into perspective, think of it as both a monitor slash TV and as like a webcam. Our go-to benchmark test will be the Switch Home Menu and a Super Mario Maker 2 Auto Level. These two things are perfect for both performance and color. We're gonna run through the important factors that may not be so obvious to most, like accepted input signals, software, and additional features, and accept the reality that is technical difficulties. Then we'll apply that knowledge to the other available Cloner Alliance capture cards. Let's start with the basics. There are several factors that go into how much a capture card is gonna cost. Let's start with the two categories of capture card form factors. In internal or external. Internal capture cards generally will perform better and much more consistently, though they are generally more expensive starting at around 200 bucks. Your PCIe ports are more capable and reliable than USB and offer far more bandwidth. In this regard, it would be like would you rather trust an internal hard drive or an external one. On the other hand, that's not an option for everyone, and externals have the benefit of some portability and sometimes are cheaper. Many features cross over between the two, meaning that there aren't many exclusive features to one over the other. And while neither is immune to temporary issues and hiccups, from personal experience, external cards suffer temporary issues much more often and have some technical caveats that we'll discuss later. It really comes down to your equipment setup situation and possibly tolerance for tech issues. The most prominent detail to check for when looking at capture cards is the difference between a supported input resolution and supported capturing resolution. Supported input simply means which resolutions are physically compatible with the device, much like a monitor or a TV. You have to be careful of this because the supported input resolution and frame rate are usually higher than what can actually be recorded and thus are used in the most prominent advertising. This is the biggest difference between cheaper capture cards and higher end ones. The generic capture card for for example, is extremely limited. It supports and captures up to 1080p, but it cannot do 60fps at all. It will always be 30fps, no matter the resolution. The 4KP Plus supports 4K input, but can't actually capture 4K. The reason they would still advertise it, though, makes sense, because the 4KP Plus supports 4K pass-through, so you can still utilize 4K resolution on your 4K TV, even if you're not recording at that resolution. We'll notice these kinds of technicalities more when we get to the rest of the Cloner Alliance line of cards. And then the HD60 Pro does not support 4K input at all, so if you want even a 4K pass-through from Elgato, you're gonna have to look at their other models. Next is included software. This is where Elgato is really hard to compete with, despite how frustrating their software can be. It's feature-rich. It's got flashback recording, robust organization of footage within the software, really fast MP4 encoding, individual audio tracks, and recently they patched in multi-program support. Now, while you can stream with it, it sucks at it, so you should still go with OBS for that, which also has most of the same features I listed anyways. Here are the settings I use with the HD60 Pro. On the flip side, the software that comes with the Flint 4KP Plus is bare bones, but the nice way to put it is that there's no bloat. You can tweak your GPU video color settings to get a more accurate image if you need to. Regardless, once again, you can use OBS, so here are the settings I use. Then, the generic card has no native software, so all you've got to use is software like OBS. 
I'd like to quickly discuss max bitrate as well. Different capture cards support different max bit rates, and you'll see these advertised. The max bitrate supported by any modern capture card is plenty, which is why I didn't want to spend too much time on it and reassure you to not prioritize it when looking at capture cards. Essentially, higher resolutions require a higher bit rate to look good, so capture cards that go up to 4K will have a higher max bit rate. Max bit rate is not the bit rate that your footage will be at all times either. It's literally just the maximum bit rate it can possibly hit. The average bit rate of a file will be way lower. Lastly, the bells and whistles, the extra features that add up your price. For example, some capture cards boast being able to record internally to an SD card, effectively making them portable. There's also UVC, but a majority of modern capture cards will have this. The 4KP Plus offers a mic input, line input, and output for mixing purposes. I actually use the line out to route the audio from the game separately from the HDMI signal. I'll explain why later, but these features have a number of audio mixing utilities, whether you're using mics, you need to split audio or are using the card for cameras. The HD60 Pro offers onboard encoding, meaning it doesn't rely on your hardware to process the image. The best benefit of this I've found is that the onboard encoding handles the color space and range of what you're recording, so you don't have to rely on another program to manage the color. And in my opinion, one of the most important features that both of these have is pass-through, which is when the capture card lets you pass an HDMI signal through and output it to a monitor or TV. You should try to avoid playing the game through the signals shown on your PC. Any digital signal requires processing by any TV, monitor, or capture card you plug it into. The delay may be slight, but it's likely still going to be noticeable. You should have some way to get your signal to go to your monitor or TV. If you don't get a capture card with any pass-through, then you can get an HDMI splitter as an alternative, though this does then require more HDMI cables and the splitter itself, so the value speaks for itself when it's included on capture cards like the 4K P+. Plus and HD60 Pro. Now let's talk about audio. Audio is such a fickle beast with capture cards that I really have to dedicate a whole bit of this video to it. The long and short of it is that when you're dealing with an external USB capture card, you are more than likely going to deal with delay. Whether by design or not, because there isn't enough bandwidth to keep the audio in sync in real time. This is why many external capture cards are designed with inherent audio delay in mind, like the 4K P Plus and even the generic capture card. Cloner Alliance shows on their website how to set the card up and properly add 470 milliseconds of async delay to the video. If you try to haphazardly set them up to be as real-time as possible, you may have issues like crackling or visual or audio stuttering, and with older capture cards it was pretty common to get increasing delay over time. With USB capture cards you will usually have to do some sort of compensating for delay like this. However, for the 4K P Plus specifically, there is an alternative option that I mentioned earlier. What I did was I routed the audio separately from the HDMI signal and used the line out to the mic in on the front of my PC. Routing your audio independent of the HDMI signal is the penultimate solution to any audio problems, and being able to do this means extra cables, but it can save you a headache if you're having issues and want no discernible delay on anything you use. Now can you have issues with internal capture cards? Well, I've gotten too many headaches from this thing to tell you that internal cards are completely immune to audio issues. It's taken many, many nights of tweaking settings to figure out how to get this thing set up the way I wanted it. From this point, since Cloner Alliance provided the 4K P+, let's look specifically at their line for the rest of the video. If you want to look at the lineup for Elgato or Avermedia Capture Cards, which are the other two brands I'd highly recommend, you'd find their links in the description. Cloner Alliance cards are all external and don't cover 4K recording, HDR support, or refresh rates higher than 60. Elgato and Avermedia are able to keep up on those trends as they become more the norm, but there's a price to those things anyways, so if those were specific features you were looking for, you ought to head over to them. If you're still on board or on the fence about Cloner Alliance, let's take a look at their other options. The 4K P Plus is the only $200 card from them and the rest goes steadily down in price from there. But as you've seen, the Flynn 4K P Plus is their highest-end card. 
Then there's the Flint 4K P. The difference is that it doesn't support 4K pass through at 30 FPS, only 30. So if you don't have a 4K display to pass through, or don't mind 30 FPS, you may be able to live with it over the 4K P. Then there's the Flint LXT, which doesn't have any pass through or extra audio lines for mixing. Then there's the Shirt 4K C, with no pass through audio mixing and a non removable USB C cable. Lastly, the Flint LX, which has pass through support, but no 4K pass-through support or line mixing. So we have broken down the Flint 4K P Plus and its value and what the features mean that come with it. So should you buy this capture card? Well it depends if it meets your needs. Its quality is fine, the audio mixing potential is pretty awesome, and for me, 4K pass-through would be future-proofing, and for some it might be exactly what they need. Though it has setbacks that are inherent to external capture cards that you, you know you gotta keep in mind if you look at any of them, with very few exceptions. I won't be using it primarily because, well, I can't go back from internal capture cards and the Elgato software is too feature rich to give up, it's really ingrained in my workflow. But if features like 4K pass through and the audio mixing potential interest you, then you may want to consider the Flint 4K P+. Otherwise I hope I have armed you with enough knowledge to be able to go and look at the competition more analytically, figure out more of what you need. Thank you all for watching, stay tuned for uh, maybe within a month or so, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles port reveal will be coming up, so in the meantime, if you want to support me, you can find me on Patreon, and if you want to keep up to date on projects, then follow me on Twitter. Till next time, thank you for watching.